going to follow along with the <clears throat> example uh, in the textbook of uh, the pewter bookends and we're going to look at how to calculate a direct materials variance. To do this we need um, four or five variables depending. We need standard quantity, standard price, actual quantity, actual price, and actual output. So we need a standard for our quantity and we're told it's three kilograms per unit. We need a standard price which we're told is four dollars per kilogram. So our standard cost is twelve dollars per unit in direct materials. All I did was multiply the three kilograms by the four dollars per kilogram. Then we need some actual results. The actual quantity that we used was sixty five hundred kilograms. The actual price we paid was three dollars and eighty cents per kilogram. Those are the inputs. Those are our inputs to the process, actual quantity and actual price. We also need to know what our outputs were. 2,000 units is what we made with those inputs. Now we're in a position to do a full standard cost variance. So the first column is actual quantity times actual price, our actual results. Our actual quantity was 6500 Our actual price was $3.80 per kilogram for a total cost of 24700 We compare that to our actual quantity times the standard price because we just want to see if price had any effect. And so it's the same 6500 times what it should have been, $4. And we get 26000 So 24700 minus 26000 is negative 1300 that is our price variance and remember when it's negative it's favorable so we'll put 1300 favorable and we can see that we had a standard of four dollars per kilogram we actually paid three dollars and eighty cents per kilogram that's a difference of twenty cents twenty cents times sixty five hundred is thirteen hundred for a final column we're going to do the standard quantity for two thousand units of output what would the standard quantity have been for 2,000 units of output? Well, 3 kilograms per unit times 2,000 times our standard price of $4 is 24,000. So to produce 2,000 units based on standard quantity and standard price, it should have cost us $24,000. So our quantity variance, now we're only doing it from the middle row here, the 26,000 minus the 24,000, is positive by 2,000 so it's unfavorable. So we have an unfavorable quantity variance of 2,000. We have a total flexible budget variance 24-7 minus 24,000 of $700 positive. So we have a total budget variance of 700 unfavorable. Chapter 9 got us to this point where we could get to a budget, a flexible budget variance unfavorable by 700. But whose fault is it? Well when we look here we're seeing that, hang on though, we had a favorable price variance but an unfavorable quantity variance. Now this process assumes that all the purchased units are used. It assumes all the purchased units are used. Let's say we don't use them all. Here's where uh, that difference where I said a time of purchase and a time of use comes in. Let's say that uh, we uh, have uh, uh, we used 5,000 kilograms instead. Our actual quantity used was 5,000. And our actual output was 1,600 units that were made. Well, our price variance is calculated at the time of purchase, so nothing changes. Nothing changes. It's still 1,300 favorable. But our quantity variance, we have to change our middle row. Our actual quantity times our standard price. Our actual quantity this time was only 5,000 used. So, 5,000 times our standard price of $4 is $20,000. Now our standard quantity is for 1,600 units. So it's 3 kilograms to make 1,600 units times $4. Should have cost us 19.2. It cost us 20. So we're $800 unfavorable. And this is measured at time of use. So this is rather simple. I'm not going to go too much into the interpretation of it. Let's just worry about the math of it for now. Let's go on to the direct labor variance, and we'll see that it's pretty much, it, well, pretty much it is the same thing, except some names change. So our direct labor variance, 
we're going to need a, a measurement standard and actual quantity, price, and we can figure out quantity times price. So our standard for labor hours, we're told, are 2.5 hours per unit. We're told this is a labor-intensive product we're making. These pewter bookends are labor-intensive and require skill. Two and a half hours per unit. Our price is $21 per hour. So when we multiply the two together, we get $52.50 per unit indirect labor. This is just indirect labor now. Well, what did we actually pay for direct labor? Well, actually, we used 5,400 hours, we're told. We only paid $20 an hour. So we can see we're going to have a favorable price uh, variance already, a rate variance, right? There's our inputs. We need our outputs. Well, we made 2,000 units. 2,000 units was our output. So let's go to work. First column, AQ times AP, actual quantity times actual price. It's always the same, always the same. We're isolating the effect of price only here. So actual quantity times actual price, 5,400 hours times $20 is 108,000. Now we multiply that actual quantity by the standard price. What should we have paid? What was the standard? It's 5,400 hours. We should have paid $21 for a total cost of 113400 So our rate variance, it's not called a price variance now. It's called a rate variance because this is the rate per hour. Our rate variance is $5,400 favorable because 108000 minus 113,400 dollars is negative 54. That makes it favorable. Well, now let's do the standard. A standard quantity for 2,000 units. How many hours should we have incurred for 2,000 units times the price we should have paid? And that is 2.5 hours per unit times 2,000 units times the price we should have paid, which was 21. It should have cost us $105,000. So between the middle column and here, our efficiency variance 113,400 minus 105 is 8,400 positive. A positive number is unfavorable. So we have 8,400 unfavorable. Our flexible budget variance is 3,000 unfavorable. But we can see that, hey, we saved money on labor, but oh, they're not that efficient. And if you read the chapter and you read the beginning vignette, the story, you'll see that they're concerned that the new employees they hired are not as qualified and that's why our costs are higher because they're not as qualified. Well, this pretty much shows it. You had a rate variance. Yeah, we got away with paying them $5,400 less, but look, they're not that efficient. So sometimes it's worth paying more to get more efficiency, right? Calculating it the shortcut way, we see it's 5,400 times 20 minus 21, actual price minus standard price. And over here, we're going to put our standard price of 21, our actual quantity, 5,400 minus our standard quantity of 5,000. So it's 2100 times uh, uh, 400, or sorry, 21 times 400, 8400 8, unfavorable. So that was calculated pretty much the same way. And let's move on to the variable overhead variance, variable only. And let's see how that's done. You'll see it's the same thing. For each one that we do, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. So here's our quantity, here's our price, here's the quantity times price. Here's our standard. What is our standard for quantity? Remember, this is uh, our rate. What is it? It was direct labor hour, so it's the same thing. 2.5 hours per unit. But we have a $3 per hour variable overhead. Predetermined overhead rate. The variable component of it is $3. So in variable overhead, we're looking at $7.50 a, a unit just in variable overhead. Well, actual, remember, we actually used 5,400 hours. Uh, and our total uh, variable overhead costs came in at an average of 285 per hour. Those are our inputs. And still, we made 2,000 units. That's our output. So let's see what we have. What's the first column? AQ times AP, our actual quantity times actual price. What's our actual quantity? 5,400. What's our actual price? $2.85. That's $15,390. We compare that with an actual quantity times a standard price. Actual quantity times a standard price. Actual quantity, times the standard price. Actual quantity still $5,400, but it should have been 3 bucks. So it should have been 16200 
So 15390 minus 162 is $810 favorable. This is called a spending variance. Overhead spending. A spending variance is $810 favorable. Not bad. Okay, so we're we're doing okay there. Now let's compare the actual quantity at the standard price to the standard quantity for the standard price. So standard quantity for 2,000 units times the standard price. Our standard quantity is two and a half hours times 2,000 units, what we should have uh, used, times what we should have paid, $3 in overhead for 15,000. 16.2 minus 15,000 is $1,200. And $1,200 is positive, so it's unfavorable. Now we could have, you, you could see how we can get to that $1,200 easier, right? 5,400 hours minus 5,000 hours, there's a difference of 400 hours that were used at $3 per hour. There's your 1,200. Our total flexible budget variance between the two is 390 unfavorable. So if we were just looking at that 390 unfavorable, we would might say, you know what, that's close enough. But once we break down and we see that we have a positive spending variance, but a huge inefficiency variance, or our efficiency variance came in really negative, uh, now we see, yeah, no, you know what, we do have to pay attention to this. Here's the shortcut way of doing it. Uh, we can see that we get the same results, negative 810 over here, that makes it favorable. And on this side, we're going to multiply our $3 rate by the difference in our actual hours versus what we should have used. There's a 400 uh, hour difference times 3 bucks, that's 1200 positive. That makes it unfavorable. So we can see that this is the same thing each time, just the names change. Labor variance, price variance, spending variance, etc.